Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now we have our second guest in the studio. Now this woman was listed as one of 100 most inspiring women by Wine Niger, as well as one of, one of the most 100 inspiring women by the leading ladies Africa. She's a member of the Nutrition Society UK. She's an award nominee and award winner. She holds a master's degree in public and international affairs from the University of Lagos and a diploma certificate in child nutrition. She's an author, child nutrition advocate, and the founder of August Secrets Nigeria, a growing award-winning child nutrition brand that provides nutritious meals for babies and African staples. Her name is Toyin Onibanjo. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Welcome you. to Hello. Thank you very much. So, yeah, even though I've, I've heard this story before, but I'd like to hear it again. You know, the story <laughs> where you, the, the point where you decide or you discovered that making baby meals was going to be your future calling. Tell us about that story again. Um, okay, so I had my son abroad and um, I returned to Nigeria and um, I used to be um, like you. I used to be a journalist. <laughs> oh, I didn't know so, this bit. Yes. <laughs> and I did that for seven years. So um, along the line, I realized that, you know, I need to resume for work. But my son wasn't taking all the food that I bought. I mean, the bag full of, you know, foreign cereals that I bought. So I had no choice than to start checking, you know, oh, I check on the packs today, carrots, and then I try to make it myself. So, and I love food. I really, really believe that. I mean, food should be, food is life. Food is medicine. So if um, I love food that much, if I can make uh, good food for myself, and then why is my son not eating? Why is he starving? So I started to make these foods. And, you know, with the advent of digital media, today you can make flyers. Today you can share with your friends the things you're doing. And um, within a few months, I started making the, and I got requests. Like, amazingly, the day, the first day I decided to uh, um, uh, make a sale, I got about 20, 30 requests. And then since then, it has never been different. So today, with just myself, we have um, over 30 staff, and we have a factory. <laughs> just wow, from How old that. was your son when you discovered this? Um, he was um, six months, you know, after exclusive breastfeeding. I ended to drop him at the crash, and then I would express breast milk, and then give complimentary food for him to eat. He rejected every of the foods. And then I work, they will call me, oh, your son is not eating, no, you know, and if a child is not eating, the mother cannot concentrate. You can't get the best out of a woman whose child is not feeding well. So if a, child, if a child is feeding well, then the mother can concentrate and be the best she can be ever. Okay. So, so basically, <laughs> August Secrets has been existing, the brand had been existing before you started this? Or no. this was actually the creation of August Secrets? This was actually the creation of August Secrets. And then it started in 2016. 2016. Yeah. So that's like two years now. Yeah. And basically, as, you know, as, an, as a nutritionist now, what do you think are the issues of Nigerian children when it comes to food today? Okay, um, I think the number one problem is that most of the foods we have in Nigeria are boring. So what August Secret has come to do is to make it, like to jazz it up. Okay, so the same beans, eh? I don't like beans. I mean, almost every child in Nigeria don't like beans. I hated beans growing up. Well, okay, I like so beans almost now. everybody hates beans. Okay, so rather than um, chasing the children with beans and they say, oh, my child is not eating beans and then they're missing out on the essential, you know, proteins, fiber and all of that in beans, we decided to blend beans in a very special way. So the beans, you see with chicken, you can rub beans with chicken. And then the same chicken, they think they are eating only chicken. Meanwhile, they are eating beans and chicken. So they can have um, veggie beans, pancakes. They can have um, chicken nuggets with beans, you know. The same beans, making it fun. So once you can make it fun, that is all you need. The child is going to eat it. Interesting. <laughs> now let's look at, you know, at what point do you think, because I'm sure you're also into um, breastfeeding as well. At what point should food be introduced into the life of a child? We know that people will tell you that the World Health Organization says you should feed, breastfeed your child <laughs> for two years. You know, fan, shout out to the World Health Organization for that. Yeah. Some people honestly cannot, not because they don't want to, but because people are working, people are trying to make ends meet. So what is the logical age to introduce food to a child? Not milk, not breast milk. Okay, to be honest, ideally a child, because we um, as um, an organization, to be honest, we um, advocate for exclusive breastfeeding and because it's a mandate. So uh, um, I belong to an organization known as Scaling Up Nutrition Business Network. So one of the ways in which we um, aim to um, promote nutrition is to, is to use businesses. Okay, I'm making baby food rather than saying, okay, just going about saying mothers try to breastfeed. People, those of us who sell the baby food, apart from just selling the food, we can also use our food to tell people, you know what, don't worry, just ensure that you breastfeed your child for six months, and then after six months, your child is going to eat. Because there's another um, um, school of thought or a myth that, okay, if my child uh, breastfeeds till six months, he'll become a picky eater, he won't eat. 
it's our duty to let you know that you should breastfeed till six months as much as you can. So we have mothers who are actually ill who cannot breastfeed. That is an exception. Um, but if you can, you should breastfeed your baby for six months. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> speaking about um, picky eaters, we've talked about the fact that you can jazz up food. What other tips can you give to mothers to make mealtime interesting? Because for a lot of mothers, mealtime is a time they dread the most. Mealtime and bath time because the child is going to be screaming and throwing <laughs> up. So what other tips would you give to new moms or first-time moms? Funny enough, it's not only first-time moms. Some moms, their first child, you know, it yeah. doesn't give them stress. And then the second child comes and changes the game for them. So what <laughs> advice and tips would you give to moms to make mealtime a very special, fun time? Okay, so make it colorful and make it simple and make it nutritious. Colorful. So if you're having um, green peas, and you know your child should actually say green peas, try to have um, like another red food there, like strawberry or grapes. So sometimes they think that um, um, food should be, I mean, we can buy them toys as expensive as 20,000 naira. So let's buy them food and make it fun as well. So make it colorful. If you can buy them colorful toys, buy them colorful food and save yourself of stress. And then the children will also have nutritious food. So um, make it colorful and make it simple. Okay, so this morning uh, we're having strawberries with pancakes. It's just as simple as that. So it doesn't have to be moi moi with rice, with their with <laughs> <laughs> with furry roll. And then my child must take vegetables. No, the same vegetables, just make it in a very simple way. Make it simple and then just enjoy the whole process. So let's not make meal times like, oh, oh my God, we're there again. No. So and that's why, I mean, that's why we're there. That is our duty. Exactly. So as much as possible, we don't just sell. We ensure once, if, once mothers come to our page, they're like, oh, wow, amazing. So it's just fun, fun, fun. We try to ensure that, you know, after a very long day, you are working. What time do you have to be making paparazzi or you are making one kind of big food? <laughs> no, just ensure that you make it fun and make it colorful. Because the more number of colors on the plate of your child, the more nutritious the food is colorful likely going to be. Colorful food or even the colorful utensil and yeah, colorful Yeah, colorful plates, colorful spoons. You'll be amazed that... The only re one of the things that can help you relieve the stress of uh, meal time is a colorful spoon and a colorful plate. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to ask, what happens when you have a super picky child? Let me give a scenario. Um, I almost suffered an eating disorder growing up, and that's mm. because I basically didn't like so much. Truth is, I just love to have tea, bread, and honey. Mm, then, okay. if it had to be like solid food, it has to be fried yam or Irish potato and egg. Anything else is a no-no. I didn't swallow till I was 11. Mm. So now, in my case, which I have seen in some other kids, how do you solve a problem? One, because I had cousins who were like that, and then there was this one who obesity just became an issue. Mm. She just went all the way up in weight. How do you regulate, you know, issues of obesity in children, which is on the high these days, if we won't tell ourselves the truth, mm. and then also be able to contain your child's pickiness when it comes to food? Okay, so I think I'll start with obesity. Um, the reason, one of the reasons obesity is on the rise um, today is because of the um, popularity of junk foods. And um, I was at um, a, nutrition, a global nutrition program in Thailand um, a few days ago, and one of the things we talked about is um, producers of junk foods that are high in fat, high in calories, are making the foods attractive. So those of us making nutritious foods, what's our duty? Let's make it attractive too. So um, we're, we're making um, uh, green peas or, or even as a mother, make the food in the house attractive. Okay, so for our, um, obesity, one of the things that we see is that um, because we're, uh, we have lots of busy mothers today, what we just is, oh, because I'm busy, let me just pass this donut to my child. Let me, and donut is laden with sugar, with all sorts that actually increase the weight of these children. So as busy mothers, um, we should stop being slaves to our children just because they like it, because you suffered in your life. I mean, you grew up in the village, so to speak, and, but because you want to make your child happy, rather than push donuts to them or push, I mean, not that those things are really bad in itself. I mean, once in a while, I eat you donuts indulge, too. Yes. Yeah, indulge. But like every day, junk food in the morning, in the evening, and before you know this child's weight is increasing and then um, it becomes a problem. So rather than that, let mothers understand that healthy food is important no matter how busy you are and then also don't be slaves to your children oh they will cry they should cry if they cried if they if they didn't cry they won't take them away from the hospital now exactly <laughs> so exactly so let's stop being because most times when we have issues of obesity it's usually oh it's because what what he wants to eat it's because what he wanted to eat and then for picky children who will not just eat anything at all okay you mentioned that you take tea so the question we always ask is my child did not eat anything at all, right? Okay. But what is it taking to survive? Only tea. 
there is something you can put in the tea that will make the child to eat it. You can blend watermelon with the tea and you eat it. You can blend pineapples with the tea and you take it. Okay. So just basically <laughs> looking for ways to trick the child. The same thing that the child likes to eat, just trick the child. It does, it's the same thing. Oh, you want tea? Okay, you want just tea? Okay, don't worry, I have tea for you. Meanwhile, you know in your heart that you've added some tricks into the tea. Mm, mothers <laughs> and fathers, we're hoping that you're learning. Nice. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're listening to all of this and, you know, we're, we're all for having better nutrition and better life for our children. Yeah. Sp still speaking about picky eaters, there's something like that we've grown up thinking it's the norm and it's normal force feeding. So you want to feed a child because the child doesn't want to eat. You hold the child's nose and start forcing the child mm. to eat. You know, there's a video on social media that I saw yesterday of a woman force feeding her child. Yeah. A neighbor took a video of her and posted it online mm. and people have been attacking her. And some others are saying, why are you attacking her? Is that not how you ate when you were <laughs> growing up? So the fact that they did it in our generation, does that make it right? Okay. Uh, force feeding is actually very wrong. I mean, force feeding is wrong. It's an abuse on the children. We just talked about how to make food fun for these children. Um, force feeding can be deadly um, and it could be life threatening. And we cannot encourage force feeding because you really can't say, if we say, okay, yes, because, okay, let's even be liberal. Okay, most of our, our um, mothers force fed us. And the next mother goes to force feed their child and the child dies. What are we going to say to God? Maybe we should explain why they die because some people don't even understand. Why would the child die? Is it not food that we choke, help the child? They can choke, you know, with air. air they can choke. Even children can choke on peanut butter, as small as it is. Not to talk of the air. And I actually saw the video and the child was actually almost breathless. Yes. That is totally wrong. It's an abuse. It is um, something that uh, the parents even should be arrested for because it's more like you want to kill the child. I hear Honestly, that in some countries it's actually a criminal offense. Yes, it should be yes. a criminal offense. Just the same way if you uh, um, hit a child so much that, I mean, we have um, our human rights um, um, organizations now that where children are you know, being hit to a level where you find blood and all of that, you could be arrested. The same way uh, mothers who force feed should actually be called to, I mean, no. not necessarily arrested, but I mean, probably they should bring them to maybe August Secrets. To because see. the truth <laughs> is, some of these people don't <laughs> even know what they're doing yeah. is wrong, yeah. which is why I'm glad we're having this conversation. So we we'll talk yeah. about it. The fact that something is a norm, it's a doesn't tradition, it's a right. culture, doesn't make it right. Yeah. And because our parents did it to us, doesn't mean we should do it to our children. I mean, there were many people growing up that they use rod, iron, anything your parents see yeah. is your discipline, mm. is your tool for <laughs> discipline. So you annoy your parents, they pick you and stone you. Mm. In our generation, these things should not be encouraged. Yeah. Fine, we turned out not right. But the kind of, um, we're in different dispensations mm -hmm. and different generations. Mm -hmm. So please, if you're one of the mothers that force feed <laughs> your children or fathers that force feed, please, we are hoping that after today, you will learn that you can actually kill your child while trying to do them good. We know you're doing it from a good place, but instead go online and research, read books that will teach you how to make meal time fun time. You have a free event coming up shortly. Tell us about it. Um, okay, so um, um, Saving 10K is um, August Secrets Outreach. And um, the truth is, if we must, uh, the rate of malnutrition, especially for children um, in Nigeria, is um, as high as 30%, um, so which is really, really terrible. And malnutrition is not just about undernutrition. Undernutrition, you know, um, is when you see a child wasting or stunting. And then overnutrition is, um, and the has to be obese. something about obesity, um, uh, you know, so... Malnutrition is, has gone beyond, oh, okay, it's just for the poor, it's just the poor people. However, it's actually very high in some communities. And then the truth is, where we get our inputs from? So we go to get sweet potatoes from the farmers, we go to get a guinea corn from them, we go to get crayfish from them. But the child of the farmer is actually malnourished. What kind of life is that? So what the outreach is uh, um, going to do is that it's an annual thing and we go out to reach out to the community. So not just mothers online, not just busy mothers. We now go to the communities to say, Mama Kechi, Papa Michael, the same food you're selling in the market, the same food you're harvesting at your backyard is very nutritious for your child. You don't need to go outside of your community to get good food. Your own local food is very good and is nutritious for your child. With this um, uh, training, with this um, community reach out, we are looking at um, reducing the rate of malnutrition in at least 10,000 children annually. Brilliant. And how can people get to be a part of this? For those of you who are thinking of nice things to do during the Christmas, this is a good initiative. 
you know, how can people be a part of this? Yes, so um, if you want to uh, give, uh, if you want to reach a monkey, you have to come with a banana. So of course we have, um, we're giving relief materials. So before we do the training, we're giving relief materials. We're giving, um, especially a thing again is where there is um, poverty, uh, where the a mother is helpless, it's hard for her to uh, provide a nutritious food for her child. So we're looking to give, um, we're looking to give um, relief materials for the mothers, help them, empower them. So in any way, in right. any way, volunteering. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much for what you're doing, <laughs> you know, you helping and giving back. If you want to be a part of this, how can they follow you on social media? Um, at augustsecrets.ng. Okay, at August, augustsecrets.ng if you want to be a part of this. Thank you for joining us, Tony. Thank you very much. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.